All right. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, this is Una Daly from CCCOER, and welcome to our Achieving the Dream OER Degree uh, Community Meeting, Spring 2018. And I understand a lot of people are not experiencing spring weather at the moment, but hopefully <laughs> another few weeks we'll, we'll see the spring. And uh, we've got a, our main topic here is getting ready for the OER Degree Initiative Summit in Miami. And of course, I have uh, Fran Carpenter uh, from ATD and Richard Sebastian here with me who will be sharing lots of good information about the summit and other things with you today. Here's kind of our agenda. Uh, we're gonna go through some uh, degree news updates. We're gonna talk a little bit about um, some of the conferences this spring that you've been attending, and we hope that you can share some information if we don't have the latest, with a focus, of course, on DREAM, which was uh, just about a month ago and a uh, very successful conference. And then uh, we're gonna get right into um, the OER Degree Initiative Summit. Um, and we have uh, two very brave, uh, folks out there, uh, uh, Madeline Ford and Samantha Veneruso, who've agreed to uh, give rapid fire demonstrations um, for you this morning to show you uh, what everyone's going to get a chance to do at the summit. And then we'll just talk a little bit about um, other conferences that are coming up and any other topics that you'd like to share with us. Any questions? All right, well, I think I'm gonna turn this over to uh, Richard and Fran to talk a little bit about the summit. And um, I can give you guys remote control or I can move the slides for you, whatever you prefer. Um, let's see, hand me remote control. Let's see if it, if it works for me. Okay. Sometimes I know it's tricky. So while Una is doing that, um, I just want to say hello to everybody again. We look forward to seeing you um, in a couple of weeks in Miami. Um, so this, we're just going to give you a little brief overview of the summit. Uh, we want to share a couple of things and save a couple of surprises for when we get there. Um, but basically, the summit is, this is our technical, this is technically, excuse me, our last um, meeting of every one of all of the grantees together. Um, and so that's why this year we want to make sure that we really celebrate you. We highlight things that you're doing and things that you've accomplished. Um, I think I lost the, the next, let's see what happens. Nope. Oh, no, I lost it. Wait. Uh, oh. Oh, oh, no, go. good. Well, let me go back. Um, so basically, we're going to be at the Miami Marriott in Biscayne Bay. That's on the slide a little bit um, later. So I want to make sure that everybody has their um, hotel rooms and that they've registered for the conference. Um, our registration numbers are sort of fluctuating. They're increasing every day. And we want to make sure that we have everybody um, registered to attend. Um, a couple of things to keep in mind as we move forward are the Lumen deadlines. You all know about these very well. Um, so our next one would be June 15th. You all know that the March one passed already. Um, so our June 15th one is the next one that's coming up. Um, and we really wanna make sure that all of the feedback is responded to and gathered so that the summer can go off well. Let me see, I keep losing it, Una. So maybe you click for me, Una, please. Yeah, sorry about okay, that. Okay, no problem. Um, so then also, we're going to have during the summit a presentation from SRI. Um, and so this is just a slide, basically, um, that we share every time we have these meetings, just so that you're aware of when the collection dates are occurring. Um, so you can just glance at this. We're basically moving into, we're in spring right now for a lot of people, well, for everybody, really, even though it's not really spring. Um, and um, you'll see that all of the section level data will be finished by June, um, the student level data by July, and then the cost study data by August. We will share out some preliminary data during the summit, um, so you'll have a chance to see, you know, baseline what things are looking like out there as far as student data and cost data are concerned. All right, next one, Una. Um, so at DREAM, um, I actually was a little bit torn between a couple of the sessions, so I know that a good amount of you were able to present, so thank you very much. I know some of you um, submitted proposals on your own, and I know that some of you served on a panel with Richard to talk about the early impact um, of the degree initiative, so thank you. Everything was very well received. Um, we got a lot of good feedback, um, and actually from the from the conference, we during the reception and during some of the sessions, we actually were allowed, um, 
we were able to speak with people who are developing degree programs or have questions about um, OER in general, and they've been thus invited to the um, degree summit. So um, we'll be able to see a, a lot of those people there as well. Um, Richard, did you want to say anything else about this slide? Yeah, so um, I, I looked, and I don't know if, is anybody on the call today that was presenting? I, I, I wasn't Montgomery. able Montgomery. Montgomery was there. So yeah, that was Michael. I don't yeah, think it was see Michael. Michael. Yeah. Um, but, okay. but anyway, so, um, uh, yeah, you know, I think what we, there were a total, I think, of um, about six uh, OER presentations mm -hmm. uh, at the summit. Two of those were from uh, colleges that, that weren't part of the OER degree initiative. So Passaic Community College and uh, Southwest Texas Junior College. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to the other ones that you see listed here. Um, uh, so, you know, I was pretty pleased with, with the kind of the growing interest and in number of presentations and uh, OER at DREAM. <clears throat> we'll be looking next year, <coughs> excuse me, hopefully we'll be able to get more of you uh, to, to the DREAM conference to present as we're kind of winding down the OER degree initiative by then and, um, and should have some more kind of solid data. So um, hopefully we'll have an even, uh, even uh, bigger presence uh, at, at Dream for of OER uh, grantee colleges. Um, just a, a note: I was able to go to went to the Montgomery and Forsyth Tech presentation, which was uh, I thought was really great. Um, uh, I did a workshop with David Wiley uh, on uh, improving student engagement with OER enabled pedagogy. I thought it went really well. Um, the um, I wasn't able to go to the Hostos uh, presentation because it ran the same time as another one. And, um, and then our panel uh, did a panel on uh, the early impact of OER degree implementations. I thought it really well. It was really, um, uh, I mean, well attended. It was a full house. Um, we I presented with uh, folks uh, from Hostos, um, from um, uh, Lake Washington, and from Bunker Hill. So we had a of the project lead and faculty member from each of those colleges on that panel and I uh, thought we got some good questions and it was a it was really they did a great job covering kind of different aspects of how they've rolled out this this project and some of the different challenges they face and how they've dealt with them so so again I um, was really really pleased with that presentation so um, so thanks to everyone who who came uh, to dream uh, and, uh, and everyone who presented it was uh, it was really great to have OER kind of represented it on the and uh, during the during the some uh, the dream conference richard this is una were any of those recorded i don't think so uh, yeah we didn't generally do that except at some of the kind of main plenary sessions yeah okay yeah all right well too bad but it's <laughs> that, they, that they happened yeah okay um yeah i'm sorry i didn't mean to switch no. early if, if yeah Okay, I, I just wanted to talk a little bit about spring conferences. I've been involved in a few of these, um, you know, more from an organizational point of view, but I also had the pleasure of uh, co-presenting with a few of you um, at eLearning. And these are just, uh, you know, I would invite you to share. Um, Pima Community College was a sponsor for eLearning in Tucson, Arizona. Of course, that's where uh, Pima is located. And I know they did many presentations on OER. Um, and Jan or Keith, or, or any of you online, and like to share a little bit about uh, what what you presented on at um, at eLearning. Hi, Una. It's Jan. Hi, Jan. Um, hi. So you're asking about the Innovations Conference, or uh, actually either. Um, you you, you um, have been presenting at multiple conferences this spring, and if you just wanted to share very quickly uh, what your you know what your topic was, what your angle on the OER degree was. Okay. Well, we didn't present at e-learning. We didn't go to that one. Um, we were we presented here at the. Are you talking about the ITC? Yeah, ITC oh, okay. learning conference. Sorry, I saw you there, so I know you were there. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah sorry. We were there. At, at ITC, um, myself and two colleagues really focused on um, the nitty gritty of creating a course with open education resources. So we kind of walk people through how we do it from start to finish and the support mechanisms we have in place for faculty uh, who engage in that process with us. So that was really our focus at ITC. Um, 
Wonderful. I did just present at Innovations as well, <laughs> sort of. It was it was totally interrupted by that snowstorm. I don't know if anyone else was there, but oh, wow. oh it was terrible. And get, I won't even tell you how it was me getting home to Arizona from D.C. yesterday. But um, at Innovations, we presented on something different. We talked about the um, development of Pima online within the, the college and, and the history of that. So OER was just a part of it. I mentioned our progress with the grant, but it didn't focus specifically on OER. Okay. Did you see the folks from Borough of Manhattan um, there earlier this week? I did not. But I got to tell you, almost everybody left on Tuesday because okay. of the weather. <laughs> yeah. Because I know there was um, Borough of Manhattan, specifically Jean Amaral from the library there, uh, what, had a had a submission, uh, a proposal that was accepted. So uh, um, no, I did not see her. Maybe we'll have to hear from her another time. And um, at the ITC e-learning conference, also um, I was there with uh, Bay College, Broward College, and Florida State College at Jacksonville, and we had a really fun panel that we did, where each of the colleges did a short presentation and then we used an online tool called Cahoots to ask questions. The audience got to vote on it and then uh, the three colleges got to weigh in on how they handled different challenges. So it was a, it was a really fun uh, panel presentation. And I, I don't know if, um, if Joseph or Tom or um, Peter are here today, but would like to chime in at all. Uh, hi, this is Pete. Oh, hi, Pete. How you doing, Anna? Good, good. <laughs> uh, greetings from our spring break. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> no, it just sort of tells you something about me. Like I'm, you know, I'm not too busy to be, to be on this webinar. So um, it, it, I, uh, the ITC e-learning conference was a lot of fun. I thought I thought the session that, that we did with you, Una, was, 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 was really cool. Um, definitely a little bit different. Um, uh, I also did a one of those little round robin uh, presentations. They do like this, uh, you know, uh, sort of speed dating, uh, where you sit at a table for ten minutes and someone, you know, presents or has a discussion, and then you move on to another table. And uh, it was interesting. I uh, met a number of people from different schools, and we presented on. Uh, I presented briefly about how you know you have all you need to have all of these plans ahead of time in order to sort of plot out your your course not only at the program level uh not only at the course level but also where your support's going to come from with uh with your faculty and subject matter experts and the kind of departments that you're working with and and that the timing of each of those things is so important and none are predictable uh so we sort of discussed you know what what you can do as as individuals to to try to go with the flow um, because you have to have a lot of options on the table in order to keep producing these courses in a timely manner. Great, great. Una? Yes. This is Jan. May I add one more thing? Oh, absolutely. Uh-huh. I forgot to mention at the ITC e-learning conference that um, I was inspired by the work of the Santa Ana team uh, in the keynote they did with the students at the Open Ed Conference in October. And we did something similar at ITC where we brought in a panel of seven of our students to talk about their experience in online courses and specifically with OER. And it was standing room only in that room. And the students just did a great job articulating, you know, what they felt was beneficial for them. Um, and it was just a really rewarding session. Wonderful. Thanks for sharing that. I think I might have missed that. I did have to leave um, Tuesday night from the conference. So I missed Wednesday. But yeah, it was an amazing conference, actually. I've been attending e learning um, for probably six or seven years, with a couple of years where I miss it. But it, there were so many OER sessions that I couldn't go to all of them because they were double booked. And, so, and this is so they've been growing year by year, but it was really impressive this year. And it was wonderful that we had ATD OER degree colleges there, you know, really sharing the, the, the exciting work because I think the other OER presentations I went to were far more basic, which was fine because a lot of the ITC network is still relatively new to OER, but 
the ones that I attended that were, um, you know, from our degree grantees were far more kind of nuanced and, you know, when you get to this level, you'll need to start thinking about this. Um, so it was, it was a nice balance. Um, I don't know if anyone else has attended a conference this spring that's not on here that you'd like to share, uh, uh, you know, either regional or a national conference or one that's coming up. I... Uh, hi, this is Juvil from uh, Central Virginia. Hi, Juvil. Um, we are we are going to have the a new horizons conference, and one of the panels or one of the tracks is OER. And Cheryl Huff is actually in charge of that. Uh, I don't think she is uh, in this uh, call right now. But um, we will be doing uh, some uh, OER presentations, and this is going to be April uh, April 11th to the 13th, coming Wonderful. up. Right, week after summit. Yeah, yep. she mentioned that to me um, in email. Um, it sounds like a wonderful um, conference for, for the folks in Virginia, <laughs> which is a big, big group. Um, anyone else? Thank you for sharing that, Juville. Um, I know there were some plans to go to ACC, ACCC, um, which is, I believe it's in Texas. It might, I think it's in Texas this year. And I know the Texas Consortium was looking into that one. I don't know um, if they uh, are still presenting there. Um, but I'll, I'll check back in. I think San Jacinto was leading that one. We'll uh, see. Luna? Yeah. Hi, good afternoon. This is Tonja Connerly. Uh, oh, as how are you? Good, good. Great. Yes, I want to. We will be presenting on Saturday at I think it's from three thirty to four thirty, and it is located in Dallas. Wonderful. And uh, Gay Lynn would be uh, will be heading up the consortium for for all of us. But yes, we all will be there, and we will be presenting. That's wonderful. That's that's a great conference to share your um, your you know the the work you've been doing. Um, wonderful. I'm so glad to hear that. And one more uh, for SUNY and CUNY are getting together and they're actually doing their conference tomorrow on Friday. I saw something about that on Twitter. Who's speaking? This is Madeline. My apologies. Oh, sorry, Madeline. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> yeah, boy, you guys are busy. Yes, we are. <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> yeah, in a good way. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that, Madeline. Okay. And one last thing I wanted to throw in was is OE Global. This is the International Open Education Conference, and it's in the Netherlands this year. It's next month. It's the end of the month. And uh, Richard Sebastian is going to be there, which is wonderful, and he'll be talking about OER degrees on a panel. Um, I also have a panel of um, folks, um, some of whom are from um, ATD OER degrees and some which are just doing OER degrees on their own on that panel. But um, we have an amazing assortment of community colleges coming this year, and that doesn't often happen, to be honest, because it, as many of you know, international travel is very hard for community colleges to support. But uh, we have folks coming from the borough of Manhattan Community College, uh, CUNY Central, um, Herkemeyer College. Um, I believe, Bill Peltz, are you coming to the OE Global in, in the Netherlands? I am going to. This is Juvil. York? I didn't see your name, Juville. That's wonderful. Oh, I'm so excited. And SUNY OER services, so so also the general big one. And it's I'm going to have to add um, Central Virginia Community College to this list. Sorry, Juville, I I, I didn't catch uh, your Not name. No problem. Wonderful. So we'll have to plan a little get together, uh, you know, to celebrate that because I think the highest number we've ever had in the past is eight community colleges. Um, you know, because of the travel. Uh, um, so it, we're looking more like 15 community colleges, which is, whoa, that's more than I, I was able to split my expenses between uh, the ATD grant and my uh, professional development money from the college. So that's Wonderful. possible. Yeah. And the Netherlands is probably about as close as you can get, right? If you're going to go to Europe, uh, <laughs> yeah. or going to England, I guess. 
from the East Coast. It, it's, a, it's a little longer for me from the West Coast. <laughs> anyway, enough on that one. But so glad to um, have all of you coming. Um, I think you're going to really enjoy hearing from all the countries. As you know, we have uh, we have members, OEC has members in 40 countries. So it's it's it'll be a little bit different flavor. I think it'll be very interesting for everyone. I just had a quick open ed recap. Um, you know, um, there is a report coming out next week on kind of everybody who came and, and participated. Um, what I know is that as at the beginning of open ed week, we had 31 countries who had submitted events, either online or local, or resources in 15 languages. The top three languages were English, Arabic, and Spanish. Which is which is interesting. Um, a number of you participated with us on the Wednesday of Open Ed Week. We did showcases. Those are on our website, um, and we and of course um, we'd love to have you share those on your website too if you like. So they were um, twenty minute presentations about the OER degree that you're developing at your college, and it was Austin. Uh, Community College Central Vin Central Virginia, Community College Pima, Tidewater, and West Hills in California. So um, really fun. There were hundreds of events and projects that, that week. And in fact, in Virginia, it was Virginia Tech had um, kind of an open ed week a little bit later. And I think it may have been due to spring break, but they had some wonderful stuff happening just this, just this last week. Um, there were several multi-day events. And um, there was a really interesting panel um, on how OER can help overcome higher ed equity gap. And if anyone would like a link to that, I, I can send that out later on. But it was a, a wonderful panel with some community college folks, with Nicole um, Allen from Spark. Um, and uh, so uh, this is kind of the evidence that we need um, for promoting OER at a, at a national level. I don't know if anyone else wanna share what they did uh, for Open Ed Week? Sure, I'll go ahead and share. This is uh, Pete Shapiro. Oh. Uh, our library uh, hosted interactive OER walls. Uh, depending on the library location you are at, it was either a, like a, a, a pinup board or, um, or could have been even a whiteboard. And students were asked to put up sticky notes to tell us what they would, what they would do with the money they saved if they didn't have to pay, them, uh, pay for textbooks. And uh, we got over 100 responses, which was nice. We are collating them as we speak. Um, we also held uh, four uh, workshops for faculty members uh, on OER at the different locations over the week. And uh, we got six of our subject matter expert faculty to step forward. And uh, we're in the midst of having them captioned right now, but we did uh, anywhere from 15 minutes to 30 minute webinar introductions to the courses they designed. So we will uh, have those on our website once that's all uh, squared away. And I hope to actually be able to pull some quotes for that from those by the faculty members about their students for the summit, which would be kind of neat. Great, thanks Pete. And I know Tanja um, from um, San Jacinto also, she sent me some um, um, different activities they did during open ed week and I'm collecting these and I'll I'll be doing a blog post over the next week about those so um, I'll, I'll send an email reminder but for any of you who would like to include the wonderful work you're doing I, I'd love to put that in the blog post because we we share that year to year and we use that as um, a way to help people uh, think about what's a good thing to do next year um, and so thank you so much Pete for sharing that and anyone else Real quickly, because I know we need to move on. To, we need need to turn this back over to uh, Fran and Richard to talk about the summit. All right. Well, let me turn that over, and so I, I'd I'd love to hear from the rest of you as well, um, and we can share that out more widely among the community. All right. Back to you, Fran. Oh, sorry, I was muted. Um, okay, so as I mentioned before, um, the summit is April 3rd through 5th, so it's going to be at the Miami Marriott Biscayne Bay. Uh, if you have not registered, please do so as soon as possible. Um, the registration link is here in the PowerPoint, and we have emailed it out. If you need it again, I can put it in the chat box for everyone also. Um, 
A couple of things that are new to this year's summit is that we're introducing the rapid fire updates, which you all are going to um, sort of hear a little sneak peek of a few today. Um, and those are really just updates for the entire group about where you are with your initiative, um, some sort of student impact, um, any lessons learned, advice you would give to colleagues or anyone else who is interested in starting an OER degree or just building an OER course. Um, then we actually are gonna have non-grantees attend like I mentioned a little bit before. So these are invited guests. So these were handpicked guests. Some of them are from um, the US. We have some people coming in from Canada, which will be exciting. So they're gonna share some of their experiences with everyone. So we're making this really sort of a networking and learning experience for both sides of the house. Um, so Una, you can go to the next slide. Absolutely. Um, so, so just so that you're ready for the summit, um, we want to make sure that all of your course plans are updated. Um, so this is extremely important as we're going through the courses that have run, that have been Lumen certified, and that are still in the queue. Uh, so we want to make sure that everything is as up to date as possible, and we want you to really get a head start on your rapid fire presentations. And um, you can also make those as creative and fun as you want. Um, because we have so many, we're gonna hear from all 38 colleges. So we wanna make sure that they're lively um, also. Next slide. Okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the schedule. Um, so on day one, which is April 3rd, um, registration will open as early as 11. Uh, we have a good amount of you coming in on Monday. Um, so you'll be able to hang out in Miami, feel the warmth, and then um, come on over and register on Tuesday. Uh, the opening plenary is gonna be by Richard. So that's gonna be early on. And then we're going to do something a little bit different here with the partner breakouts. We're gonna have just two breakout rooms where the partners pair up and you all just go to one or the other room. Um, and we're gonna have the partners sort of um, swap in and out. Um, so we're not gonna break you all up into, I think we had three or four groups last time. We're only gonna have two this year. Um, then a break obviously, and then the um, president of Achieving the Dream will come and speak and she will be giving um, more information about ATD's new strategic direction and uh, celebrating you again as well. Uh, and then we're going to get a little bit of a data preview. So that's going to be by um, RPK Group. Um, and then we're allowing the non-grantees to come in at that time. I have heard that a few of them want to come in to hear uh, Dr. Stout's presentation. So we, you may have some, some new faces in uh, as early as three. Uh, then we're going to start with our first set of rapid fires. There are six rounds of rapid fire so that everybody we're not going to hear from everybody at one time. Uh, so we have a few people signed up for round one. I did pre-sign everyone up by alphabet. Um, so if people need to switch, let me know. I'm going to be sending out the list of who goes when. Uh, so in case anybody needs to move things around, you'll have uh, ample time to, to change. Uh, then we're going to go directly into our reception, and then you have dinner on your own. Day two in the morning, registration is early. Breakfast is also early. We're gonna have uh, round two of the rapid fires happening during breakfast um, so that you know we're gonna, like I said, separate and chunk these out for people. Uh, and then we're gonna go into a local grantee spotlight. We're going to hear from grantees and non-grantees during this Florida spotlight. So we're gonna have Broward, uh, Florida State, um, College of Jacksonville. We may have two others um, in, in Florida come and join the panel as well. So we get a grantee versus non-grantee sort of perspective there. Uh, and then we're gonna break into these concurrent workshops. So these topics really came out of um, needs that you all expressed and things that we think are important as you move forward towards the end of this grant. So um, we're asking that teams sort of strategize how they wanna place people because once you're in a workshop, you're sort of in it. Um, so if people want to break up their teams and have some people go to different ones, we, we encourage that. Uh, so we're gonna have one on sustainability uh, and then we're gonna have one on effective pedagogy and faculty engagement. That's gonna be um, led by our director of teaching and learning here at um, Achieving the Dream. Uh, and then we're going to have an accessibility panel that Una's been helping us put together. Uh, so we thank you for that. And then we're gonna have another one on communication. So this is internal and external communications and sort of getting the word out 
um, on campus and sort of in the press around you uh, in your community. So then we're going to go into our third round of rapid fires uh, that will happen sort of right before lunch. And then we're going to break everyone up into affinity groups at lunch. So you're going to be able to sit with um, your colleagues at lunchtime. So we know that that was um, a big hit last year, and we want to make sure that we give people an opportunity to connect with um, people in the same area who might be dealing with the same type of um, issues or concerns or even celebrations, really. Okay. All right, day two in the afternoon. So after lunch, we're going to um, let you all have some team time. And we're going to have some sort of action planning for you, some, some things to think about when you're with your team. Um, so you can sort of plan again for towards the end of the grant. Then there's at the same time, there's going to be uh, a research and cost partner meetup. So if you're part of either the research group or the cost partner group, you're going to go off with um, RPK group or um, with SRI just for a quick check in with them. Uh, at this exact same time, the invited guests are going to have some programming uh, specific to them. Uh, then we're going to have another plenary in the afternoon. Uh, and then we're back again for our fourth round of rapid fires. Um, another plenary uh, at 4 p.m. And then dinner will be at the hotel. So we're giving you um, a break, sort of about an hour and some change break um, before dinner. And then during dinner, we'll have our fifth round of rapid fire presentations. Um, right after that, we're trying to arrange a fun sort of social outing in Miami, um, close to the hotel if possible, um, so people can, you know, sort of let their hair down and enjoy each other. Um, just a note, so day two is very long, as you, as you probably saw. Um, so we're trying to throw in as many breaks as possible. Um, so that people have a chance to sort of regroup and refresh if they need to. And we wanted to make sure there was a good amount of time between the last session and dinner. Um, so on to day three. Uh, day three, again, breakfast is, is somewhat early. And then this is our final round of rapid fire. So this is round six of those. Uh, we're gonna have a closing plenary. Uh, and then we're going to have a concurrent session, which is really gonna be, again, around your team and what you're gonna be able to do when you go back to campus. Um, after that, we're gonna have a student panel. So we're hoping to have some students from Broward College come um, and talk to you about how OER courses and reduced textbook costs have really affected them. Um, so we're gonna hear from them uh, at 1020. And then we're off. Um, so we are arranging either box lunches or some other sort of light lunch for people. Um, and then we're off for the whole spring, spring slash summer. Are there any questions about the schedule so far? Nope. Okay. All, All right. right. Great job. <laughs> Thank you. I zoomed through that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, um, now, um, we have some rapid fire demonstrations and I really want to thank um, Madeline and Samantha for being willing to um, step up and do this um, a week and a half early. So um, Matt, uh, Madeline Ford is the chief librarian and the OER degree initiative lead at Hostess Community College for, um, in, um, in the CUNY system, the City, of Univers City University of New York system. And Madeline, would you like me to run your slides for you? Uh, yes, if you don't mind. Okay, so we'll, we'll give you a few, you don't have to stick exactly to five minutes because I, I might be a little slow. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll turn it over to you. All right. Well, thank you. So, uh, so as you can see, this is Osos Community College, and uh, the other t uh, team members who are working with me, uh, Jacqueline DeSanto, she is the unit coordinator uh, for early childhood education, and Linda Miles is a librarian here uh, at, at Osos, who's been working with me on the uh, early childhood education, um, and I see I have spelling mistakes there, education, um, initiative that we're working on. Uh, so some key challenges and roadblocks that we encountered. Um, 
early on, we knew it was going to be a challenge, but the biggest one is finding the OER materials that we needed to support early childhood education. Um, and that remains consistently uh, a problem. It was easy getting our gen ed courses done, but uh, the early child has been, been a little bit more challenging. Uh, our next challenge has been expanding to more sections. Uh, we've gotten positives from students, but you know, getting the unit coordinators and chairs on board has taken a little bit more effort on our part. Uh, and communication lines, uh, how we're expanding it to the broader um, college audience. So not just talking to our faculty, not just talking to our students, but talking to those people who uh, also help with registration um, in, in various areas of our college. So uh, everyone's always involved in student engagement. So just having everybody part of the conversation has been very important to us. Uh, and then meeting deadlines. I think that's our biggest challenge here. Uh, we have a lot going on at OSTOS um, all the time. <laughs> so just sticking to the deadlines and keeping faculty um, on top of the deadlines and getting things in, that's been a big one for us. Um, the other one, which is still working on, is adjusting to existing workflows to meet the demands of the grant. Um, Coming into this, we I was already we were all engaged in something already or several different things. So it was just trying to figure out how to make this all work, and it's still been uh, problematic trying to figure out how to make it all work with an existing workflow. Flow, and uh, one of our greatest challenges is getting the data that SRI needs um, from our Office of Institutional Research. They have um, just been hit very hard by. Um, several individuals who have left uh, the office. So it's been back and forth trying to get data from them. And one, one hopes that at some point that we can just pull the data ourselves and not rely on them to do it for us. So some of our successes and uh, accomplishments. Uh, early on, we got overwhelming buy-in from our participating departments, which we did not anticipate when we first did this. And so when we sent out the call, uh, we thought, well, let's just introduce them what is OER, because we figured no one knows, and sent some videos with that, because everybody likes to look at a video. And we got immediate buy-in from our chairs and our unit coordinators. Uh, so I said that here, support of our chairs. Um, and so I don't, put, I didn't think I put all the courses here, but we've completed the history course, the English course, math, psychology, and I should have mentioned there's a comma there. We we've, we've completed, um, I think, believe four, four or five education courses to date. So um, we're on track. Uh, we got recognition from our chancellor. Uh, does this every year and somehow <laughs> we got recognition so it was nice to be nice to be known that we're doing some good work and the Chancellor recognizes that and shared it out with the entire, entire CUNY community. Um, we've seen increased interest in OER from our faculty and staff so as they've heard about the ATD grant um, they've been really excited and say can we do something um, and although it didn't fit into here we've been we pushed them to our other initiative. Um, We've also started the discussion about where this fits on reappointment, tenure, and promotion on the college-wide um, PMB level. And so that's been a really good conversation and a strong conversation, and we're bringing it back to the faculty as well to get their insight on where they feel it would have the most strength. Um, the CUNY FIRST designation, for us, that's um, a big one. A everything lives and dies in the C CUNY FIRST. Uh, so we have a zero textbook in um, a search field that students can do, and they can find all the courses that are available um, as zero textbook. Um, student impact and use. Um, we weren't sure how students would receive this, but by all accounts, students have loved the idea of not having to purchase a textbook. Have the materials that they need from the very beginning has been a plus for them, and faculty have seen the difference it has made with the students. Um, librarian and faculty relationship. Uh, that has been amazing. We have some faculty are fine, they can work on their own, but for those who need um, support of the librarians, we're right there working with them and uh, creating and building. And so it's been a great um, relationship to have that and, and a nice trusting relationship as well. And then we uh, created a LibGuide because it was so much information and keeping track of all of it, as opposed to just sending countless emails, which can be overwhelming, uh, putting everything into a LibGuide has been very beneficial. 
All right, All right. Madeline, I have to tell you that um, you have used the five minutes. I'm going to let you continue, but okay. that's just good, good for you to know for the actual summit. Yeah, I realize that, yeah. <laughs> okay. Go, yes. Continue, um, continue. So student voice and testimonial. So overall, um, students have loved having access to the materials. Um, I think one of my favorite quotes is a, a student who said here, uh, they, they, they need to take Math 100. And although it was inconvenient for their schedule, they registered anyway, because they said they, they said it had a zero textbook cost. So I thought that was great. Um, other students have said, you know, similar things. It's been really great having the resources right at hand and they don't have to spend the money. So that's been great. So I'll move on to advice to other institutions. Um, create realistic timelines. Uh, <laughs> I think sometimes we overthink it and we say we can get all this done in a week and realize we can't. Um, keep all the stakeholders in the loop all the time uh, so they know what you're doing and where you're at. Um, encourage uh, fat collaborations with faculty and librarians. Uh, I think that's a wonderful thing. And even with faculty and with faculty, having them work together has also uh, been very, very, very beneficial. Um, and the uh, next one, go out the academic box, um, looking at how you can push this out to the support services. Um, for us, we have a learning center, we have a writing center, and how can they use these resources as well? Um, and supporting librarians financially, uh, like the teaching faculty. So if they can get a stipend, that great, that's great because it just says they're part of the conversation as well. And last for us in future plans, uh, expand OER to all sections. Uh, work with non-academic departments to utilize OER. Um, do more intentional training and more ongoing training. Um, implement models for sustainability, um, looking to see do we want to use a version of tech fee, tech fee to support this or shifting funds possibly from financial aid, uh, how to get um, printing in place for those students who need that uh, on-demand printing in particular uh, and making sure we, we address accessibility and, uh, and building and creating platforms, uh, especially within the sciences and math. That's it. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> wonderful. Pleasure. Thank you. Madeline, you were, you were a few minutes over, as you know. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, but the content was exceptional. So thank you so much. Um, and yeah, a few more times through, you, you, you probably will get down to the Yeah, point. definitely. Definitely. <laughs> I know Fran is going to be a lot crueler than I am, right, Fran? Uh, no, we're going to have fancy music to um, usher you off. <laughs> That's fine. No, I, I, it'll be more succinct by then. Yes. <laughs> well, this is good practice. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yes, it is. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks again. And now we're going to move on to Samantha Venerusso from Montgomery College. And thank you, Samantha, for also uh, being willing to do this. Thanks, new no problem. Um, so I'm excited to share this um, on behalf of Mike Mills and myself um, and the rest of our steering committee. Um, if you can go ahead and uh, advance to the next slide. Our, well, I guess I should say that our, uh, our OER degree was focused on general studies with an English option and a psychology option, both built off of transfer to some of our close transfer partners. Um, some of our key challenges in Robux are very similar to Madeline's, but I decided to focus in on the letter M, momentum and maintenance. So I think some of our challenges are, you know, when we first started, there was a lot of momentum, a lot of excitement. There was a lot of high profile, yay, we're going to get this done. And now we're in that sort of trough of wow, this is a lot of work, we need to keep it going, and you know, everybody's attention has been distracted by lots of other things, and so continuing to keep the really positive momentum around it is, um, is a challenge. So that expanding sections, being able to go beyond the faculty who initially participated and de de developed materials is difficult. Um, Having an ongoing maintenance plan, so you know, a lot of the faculty put this together, had never taught with the materials or coming back to teach with the materials. All of our faculty did this kind of in groups. We didn't have, I think we only had one or two single faculty doing it. So there's some branching off of, you know, this faculty's gone off and updated materials, that person's gone off and developed new materials. Um, and not, um, <sighs> and not necessarily having a, a really strong process unless they're a really strong team to come back and re-centralize those materials so that they can be made available to everybody. So there's a lot of time around that um, involved. 
And so, and if a, dis, if a discipline or a department didn't spend the time making that plan, despite us asking them to do that, if they didn't do that, it's hard for us to manage that for them. Um, the other piece about that is that we found a lot of the faculty weren't satisfied with what they found and they wanted to do a lot more creation than we were able to compensate them for. So that I think was a struggle for a lot of faculty is they wanted to spend more time developing materials, but really with a, you know, a five course teaching load and we weren't giving them a full release. We were really just compensating um, from a stipend, a stipend type basis. Um, it was difficult for them to all be able to create as much as they would like to. Um, so I think that was one of our uh, key ones. Wow, my little my little thing went down. So um, success and accomplishments were, were brought to you by the letter A, awareness and access. So we have um, 27 courses that we're working on. 19 have been submitted. Two are new this semester, so they're just starting this semester. And then there's six that we're, we're working on. There were some licensing issues. There's some of the more difficult ones to do. There's three psychology and three literature courses, which are still in the pipeline that should have been finished but aren't quite yet there. But we've got 19 submitted, and we have a bunch certified, and we have about 364 sections of Z courses being offered this semester. Um, and that's a really big... Um, uh, when we've doubled our enrollments in Z courses, and I think we have we have faculty that are are wanting to do this work, um, and we are we have three other degrees that are building off of the grant courses because most of our grant courses are um, most of our grant grant courses are um, Gen Ed courses. So by having those Gen Ed cores available, the three other areas, criminal justice, um, business, and communications, are all able to you know, really focus on their discipline courses. Go ahead. So from, in terms of student voice or testimonials, what I thought was really interesting, taking a sampling of um, some feedback before we got from a couple different courses, it was about half and half who were now recognizing what Z courses were, which is at the beginning of last semester, fewer students knew what they were. So I think one of the things that I thought was really great was that we are starting to see students that are intentionally selecting Z courses and are recognizing what they are. So, you know, Lorena being able to, this this was a winter session course, being able to pick that course up allowed her to be able to do um, more in the spring. Um, you know, we, Michael's coming from another institution. He specifically took some courses here because they were Z, if you want to advance the next one. Um, again, somebody who knew and felt like the materials didn't distract from the learning. And then finally, Carla, who really liked the flexibility and mobility of being able to carry her materials with her and not worrying about having to, to carry a book. And finally, my advice to other institutions, um, tie OER work to social justice and student success mission. I think one of the core things that we've pushed again and again at Montgomery College is that connection to um, our very strong mission of social justice and student success. Um, identifying support and faculty, library, and staff champions. You know, find your champions, find the people who are going to go out and do the argument for you, and then build support around them. So, you know, let them go out there, let them go out and evangelize, and then make sure that you're providing a, uh, um, a support network so that, that that work isn't just shouting into a wilderness, but actually raises the profile of that work that they're already wanting to do. I think, you know, we found faculty, faculty taking risks and needing to iterate and needing to make changes and, and wanting to create and wanting to do this once they got into it, you've got to support that, that ability to get it wrong and then try again or that ability to recognize, oh, this wasn't exactly what I wanted to do the first time, I'm going to try it again. Um, engaging students and making them your champions also is really important making sure that you involve professional development staff, and that kind of connects over to the um, OER awareness and opportunities in other initiatives. So for instance, if you've already got trainings for other things that are pedagogical or that are sort of longer term, building in you know, a review of OER or, or the priority of OER into those, um, really, I think, is a powerful idea. So for instance, if you're training faculty to, to do distance learning, why not have a module in that on OER and encourage them to build an OER um, as part of what they're doing? Or if you're talking about active learning, building in a module about having student-created 
um, materials as part of active learning or problem based solve problem problem based learning or something like that. You know, just kind of weave OER conversation so it's normalized and is part of everything. And our future plans, um, there's a UNESCO um, Open Pedagogy Re Renewable Assignment um, Fellowship that's gonna happen over the summer. Um, and that's pairs of faculty or groups of faculty who are designing um, uh, assignments that go across courses that are based, that are renewable and based on um, aspects of open pedagogy. We have a laptop lend project. One of the things that we found, what we were concerned about was that some of our, our students wouldn't necessarily have access. We have Wi-Fi on campus and, um, you know, but if students don't have access to a device or something like that, um, so we, we are trying a pilot of lending laptops out each semester um, and we're uh, hoping that that will continue into the next year. Um, we have additional Z degrees and then we're also involved in statewide collaborations for OER. Great. All right. Thanks. Thank you very much, Samantha. You were um, a little over seven minutes on okay. yours, and um, I think you, uh, uh, both you and Madeline would have been a little bit faster if you didn't have me clicking for you. Um, but that, ex once again, really excellent content here. Um, maybe work on a minute a slide or something just to make sure it's, it snaps. No but. So what do the rest of you think? <laughs> Samantha and Madeline shared some really amazing information. It was great. I thought they were both awesome. Thank you. I look forward to seeing them again and also the, the rest of the grantees. I'm great. And I also have to jump off to join another call. I wanted to say that, but thank you very much for doing it. I thought that was, that was awesome. Yeah. Thank you for joining us, Richard. Yeah, um, this is Fran. I agree. I'm glad that you all had a chance to listen and practice. Um, so it lets you get a feel for how it's going to go. Um, in a couple weeks so thank you wonderful yeah thanks again samantha and madeline really appreciate you you doing that um i just wanted to mention our case studies um we had um two that just got posted last week from austin community college and pima community college um and we'll have another couple up there soon <laughs> if you would like to um do a uh, case study with us. I think uh, the information is up at the top. We'd love to share your story. Um, so we have about, we have nearly 10 now. We, well, we will have 10 in the next couple of weeks. So um, we, we would like to get a case study from all of you. So it's, it's a relatively simple uh, template that you need to fill out. I know everyone's busy. <laughs> so, but thank you for considering that. Um, these are just webinars that are coming up. I think you're probably on our CCC OER list. I also send this out on the OER degree one. We have a really interesting one in April. Um, it will be the week after the summit on how open educational practices support student-centered student design and accessibility. Um, so this is about making your courses, uh, customizing your courses to be diverse and inclusive and accessible, uh, which is a, which is an ongoing topic and of course a big um, it's a big goal for CCCOER and I know for many of you who work in this space. And then we have some great ones in May and June too. Hope you can join us for those. Um, I wanted to mention the summer and fall conferences before we end here. Um, I wonder how many of you are going to the Northeast OER Summit um, or or planning on it's the May 31st and June 1st so it's right there kind of on the on the cusp of May and June and um, it is still open for submissions so um, they are due April 4th so you have a little I think a little over a week and a half to get those in um, if you want to submit I had the pleasure of being at the conference last year it's in Amherst at the University of Amherst and it was a wonderful conference um, lots of great colleagues to share with and a really beautiful um, location there um, and then I think I think many of you know about the Open Ed Conference uh, in October um, of this year, and it will be in Niagara Falls, New York, and submissions are due for that in just about two weeks. So uh, still plenty of opportunity to get a submission in there uh, to talk about your amazing work. Uh, there's many other conferences coming up, um, not so many in the summer that are still open for submissions, but there's but the ones for the fall generally are still open. Uh, as I mentioned, if there's a couple that are coming up soon. Um, so do check out our, uh, our list here. Uh, we have a Google Doc with um, 
the conferences, the national conferences. If you have regional conferences you'd like to advertise, uh, please put those out on the list or email me and I'll, I'll add them to this list and share them with people, um, those conferences that are focused on OER. And this listing has tabs, so you'll end up in spring of 2018, but if you go to the bottom of the Google Sheet, you'll see summer and fall, and you'll be able to get over to those. All right, I think this is open discussion time. We had, um, we had a couple of things in the chat window. Fran, did you? Um, okay. Oh, all right, great. It looks like yeah, Fran's answering be, all those questions. Yeah, they should be covered. And if you um, are part of a consortium and you did not get the template, please let me know and I can send it to you. There are some questions about the UNESCO SDG Open Pedagogy. Um, this is Samantha. Um, this is part of the UNESCO um, project and it's, I'm not exactly sure how um, all of it's connected because I'm not really involved with it, um, other than knowing that we're doing it, knowing that it's happening. But I can send some more information to Una that she can put out for everybody if you like. Wonderful, Samantha. Yeah, it, there was a call for proposals that went out, and I can't remember now when it was uh, to work on this uh, project. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Samantha, you can send it directly to the OER degree list. Okay. Everyone should have posting privileges. If you have any problem, just send it directly to me. Sure, I'll do that. Thank you for sharing that. And I know uh, there were some comments here. Normally, I cannot use um, my keyboard while the presentations are going on, which is why I can't answer questions because it, it causes the slides to uh, advance. <laughs> but there were a few comments and questions. So if you had, if you posted something there in the chat window and you didn't get it answered, please, uh, if you have a microphone or just re-enter it into the chat window. Well, uh, if, if there aren't any other questions, um, I think Fran and I'll be online for a couple more minutes. Um, but we want to thank everyone for coming today and looking forward to seeing you in Miami in, in just a week and a half. And uh, here's hoping uh, for milder weather ahead. And uh, thanks again. Fran, any, any last comments from you? No, I just want to thank everybody and I look forward to seeing you soon. All right, I'm going to turn off the recorder and we'll be here for a little bit. Okay. Thank you.